Hey folks, this is Jason with the Primal Outdoors channel, and if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you've seen me cook a lot of good meals within my little kitchen space here, and you probably got a pretty good idea how everything's laid out and how it works for me. But maybe there's some details you've always wondered about, or maybe you're somebody that's new to my channel and you're just scouring the internet looking for ideas for your own van life setup. If that's the case, this video is for you. I'm going to go through every detail of my van life kitchen. All right, so before we get started in the kitchen build, let's get people up to speed who are brand new to the channel. So my van is a 1994 E350 Econoline. It's a standard length van. It does have a Tuffport high top that I had installed by Wasatch Overland, and it's got a four x four conversion. All right, so now let's get into the kitchen build itself. So we're gonna start with the countertop. So the main countertop has 38 inches wide by 22 inches up to the actual backsplash here of usable space. It's made out of a two inch butcher block. I don't remember exactly uh, what I bought. I bought it at Home Depot and they had a few different options. I wanna say it's probably made out of some wood I can't pronounce correctly, uh, but it's been really good. And then I just coated the butcher block with butcher block oil uh, to kind of keep it looking nice. It does stain a little bit and there are some, some places where some stains have happened, but just gives it a little bit of character. I do have a two burner RV stove on here. Uh, it runs on propane and I do have a propane tank mounted underneath the van that this is connected to all the time. So that makes it super convenient for cooking. The backsplash I have here is actually an old piece of the roof. When I had it converted to a high top at Wasatch Overland, I went outside and I cut a chunk of this off and then sanded all the old paint off of it and just left it bare metal. And then they welded a piece of it together here and kind of gave me a nice little L shape but anyways this has kind of added a nice feature and it was a nice way to keep an old piece of the van and reutilize it so I'm really happy with that all right here I've got a drawer it's on a lock so that way it doesn't come out when I'm driving inside I've got a piece of the butcher block table this was a remnant and I used it inside here it sets inset and this gives me a place to cut food but it also gives me extra counter space if I need it. I can also take this completely out and use it outside if I need to, which is super handy. Underneath, I have all my utensils. I've got like ladles, spoons, knives, all the little doodads that you really want when you're in a kitchen cooking. I also have some gallon bags for leftovers, Reynolds wraps, ran wrap, and that kind of stuff. Also, no kitchen is complete without a horn to drink some meat out of. All right, my van life kitchen, I have two separate units to handle my refrigeration and freezer needs. In the front here, I have the Iceco JP50, which is again, my main refrigerator. And inside there, I have added some bins that I found at a local Mart store. This just kind of helps me segregate my food a little bit better, where I can keep my meat, where I want to stay in the coldest part of the fridge, and then my vegetables and fruits I can keep at the top part of the fridge. And then things like eggs and butter and that kind of stuff I kind of keep in the middle part of the fridge. This just makes it a little bit easier for me to access my food and I'm not like just digging through things trying to find stuff. It also keeps my vegetables at the top where they are less likely to have problems with freezing if the bottom is to drop in temperature too cold. In the back I keep a larger VL60. This is my main freezer. This allows me to keep a lot of food on the van so that way when I'm in remote areas I don't have to make constant trips back to grocery stores to get food. This allows me to stay out longer and actually allows me to save some money because I don't have to make extra trips. So Iceco also happens to be the sponsor of this video and their fifth anniversary is coming up and they're going to be having a sale March 22nd through the 26th. If you check out their website, they'll have 20% off on all of their refrigerators and even 30% off on some of their older JP models. So definitely check that out. I've been using Iceco in my van for over three years now and I've been very happy with the refrigerators. I think they're very good quality refrigerators for their value and I don't think you'll be disappointed in them. So definitely check out their website below. I'll have all the link information in my description. All right, so let's get a little bit more into my kitchen storage. So in my cabinet, I have three bins. This bin has my cast iron skillet that you guys see me use all the time. It has some plates. It also has this little wooden trivet that I use for a cover for my cast iron skillet. I also use it as a cutting board, uh, but it also acts as just like a, a plain trivet. So it's pretty multi-purpose. Back behind my cast iron skillet, I have canned goods, 
And then in this middle drawer, I have some more canned goods, but I also have a lot of dry goods and snacks like nuts and cranberries and things like that. I got flour in here, uh, oils for cooking, uh, just pretty much random stuff that you would have in a cupboard in a kitchen. So on my third bin down here, I have some more cooking pots. I have my trusty bush pot, which you guys have seen me use lots of times. I use this for making coffee or just about anything I need to boil water, I use this for. Here recently, I added a new saucepan to the van. This is a heavy bottom saucepan, all stainless steel, stainless steel lid. That was something that was important to me. I didn't want a glass lid in the van. And then of course, shameless plug, I have my Primal Outdoors coffee down here. You can find this on my website if you want to support the channel, that's always helpful. And then I just have some extra storage back there. And a lot of times I use that just for extra rolls of paper towels, but I can put other things back there as well. All right, since I'm already down on the floor, let's talk about a couple things that I have on my door that specifically have to do with cooking. Now, these are on my door because I want to be able to access them when I'm inside, but I also want to be able to access them if I'm cooking outside. And the first thing I have here is a paper towel holder. This is just a standard paper towel holder that I got off of Amazon. It's nothing special. Now, one thing to know is if you're having a paper towel holder outside and in the paper towel uh, roll can roll freely, your paper towels will catch the wind and just roll off. So how I combat that is I bought one of those spring loaded door stops to kind that you would have like on a bedroom door to make it so it doesn't, the door handle doesn't smash into the wall. I bought one of those and then I screwed it into the back here and that leans against the paper towel holder, putting pressure on the paper towels, allowing me to pull a paper towel, but not allowing the wind to unravel, unravel the roll. Super handy little trick there, little van life trick. Now below the paper towel holder, I have some seasonings. Now these are my favorite go-to seasonings. Not all the seasonings I have in the van, but they're the ones that I like to use the most and I want them on the door again so I can easily access them inside and outside. So in here I have McCormick steak seasoning. I've got some garlic powder. This is my favorite to use, uh, the roasted garlic and herb from McCormick seasonings. And then I also like to use some chives sometimes. And then I've got salt and pepper. Something every van life kitchen needs to have is access to water. You need it for cooking, you need it for drinking, and it can be handy for doing dishes. I have a seven gallon water tank that's down in this area down here, and you can fill it through this port right here. This is where I access it. This is just a spigot and you turn it on and I've got a 12 volt pump that's controlled by pressure and it will automatically turn on once I turn on the spigot. I can check my water tank and see how much water I have in it by looking at my Red Arc system. It has sensors so I can look at the system and it will tell me how much water I have in the tank which is super handy. So something you guys probably noticed is I don't have a sink. That's just something I chose to do without because I didn't want to take up the space. Not only the space on top of the counter but I also didn't want to take up space underneath with uh, plumbing and gray water. So I just chose not to have it. There are times I wish I did have one but in four years I haven't missed it that much. So one interesting thing I do have in my van is a water filtration system. So you might be noticing two ports here. This port is dirty water going in so that water I can pull from a creek or a lake or stream, whatever. And then this is clean water coming out. Inside this compartment, I have the water filtration system from Guzzle H2O. It's got a carbon block filter that the water goes through first and then it goes through a UV light filter. And then it comes out this port which then I can route inside to here. I've kept it completely separate from my water system because this way I can fill up jugs for other purposes or fill up other people if they need help with water. Inside this compartment, I keep the hoses that I need for the filter system and then I also keep extra carbon block filters as well. Having the water filter system was very important to me because this is another item like my freezer that allows me to stay in remote locations longer without having to make extra trips to civilization for supplies. So one last thing on water storage, I do have this Arctic cooler inside my van. It's multi-purpose. I use it for sitting on when I'm working on my computer like a stool, but it's also six gallons of water storage or liquid storage. You could put punch or, you know, whatever it's your favorite cocktail. It, that's what it's designed for but I use it for extra water storage so if again if I know I'm going somewhere where maybe access to water is going to be scarce 
and I don't know that I can make it on seven gallons alone, then I'll fill this up with six gallons and that'll give me a total water storage in the van of 13 gallons. All right, so something that's also very important for your van life kitchen is gonna be ventilation. Now, I actually have two fans I use for ventilation. I have my Max Air fan, and it's not just for cooking, but I also use it for cooling the van during the summer. It works really good for that. But when I am cooking, I will turn this on to intake so that it actually is blowing air into the van. And then I have this other little fan here in my window that I can open up that I can turn on and suck air out of the van. So I can bring cool air in because oftentimes you get very hot cooking, like all that heat rises and you get very warm and it makes it miserable for cooking. So having a little air coming down on you will help cool you down, but it will also kind of help push that air back out and through this exhaust fan. And that's kind of how I have mine set up. You absolutely could put this on outtake and have this all these cooking smells go out through this but it will make this really messy and greasy and it's a pain in the butt to clean. It's a pain in the butt to clean as it is anyways. This one here, it's not super easy to clean, but it's not as bad and it's also not as expensive. So if it got too gummed up, I could just buy it on Amazon again and replace it. It was a fairly inexpensive little fan, but I have some control over it here so I can turn it up or down or completely off. But that's going to be an important thing that you're going to want to think about when it comes to setting up your van life kitchen. All right, so throughout this video, we have talked about a few items in the kitchen that do require power, like the ISCO refrigerators require power, the fans we just talked about require power, my 12 volt pump that runs my water, that requires power, of course, 12 volts, and the water filtration system also requires 12 volts. Now I have a complete power system in here with two 100 amp power lithium batteries from Battleborn, and I have a Red Art controller that controls not only my charging, but a few other items. Now this subject is very vast and I think it's too much for this video but if you would like me to go into it deeper please leave a comment down below and I can definitely put that together in the future all right folks so that's my van life kitchen in a nutshell I hope for my normal subscribers this might have cleared up a few things you were curious about and if you are one of those folks that are just scouring the internet looking for ideas for your own van life setup I hope this video helped Remember, if you are looking for a refrigerator for your new van life setup, that ISCO is having a sale. And even if you miss this sale, they often have sales on their gear. So check their website often. But for everyone else, I want to thank you for watching the video. And we'll catch you guys again outside.